Doctor Radio, Havana, Cuba, Editor del Desk. González. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in to our English language broadcast here from Radio Havana, Cuba. UN humanitarian agencies are stepping up efforts to assist displaced Syrians. Up next, UN Radio's Don Bob reports. The United Nations agencies are reaching more and more displaced Syrians seeking assistance. UNICEF, the UN Children's Fund, says it was urgently mobilizing more than 100,000 children's clothing and kits and around 160,000 blankets, including baby blankets, along with other winter supplies for displaced children in Syria and the surrounding areas. Meanwhile, the UN High Commission for Refugees, UNHCR, says it has delivered vital aid packages to some 60,300 families across Syria, benefiting more than 300,000 people. UNHCR spokesperson Adrian Edwards says the agency aims to provide such assistance to half a million people, or about 100,000 families, by the end of the year. Across the region, meanwhile, the number of Syrian refugees in surrounding countries who have registered or in the process of being registered now stands at 442,000, an increase of more than 213,000 since the beginning of September. Uh, this figure does not include hundreds of thousands more Syrians who have not, at this stage, come forward for registration. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization, WHO, says many hospitals and health facilities have been destroyed or partly damaged in rural Damascus. The agency says information provided by the Syrian Ministry of Health shows that 44 out of 88 public hospitals have been damaged, out of which 23 are out of service. And as a direct result of that, WHO says there has been an increase in the number of women seeking elective cesarean section, as many are worried of not being able to reach a hospital in time for delivery. Don Bob, United Nations. And you are tuned in to Radio Havana Cuba's English language broadcast. I'm your host, Ewa Waraha. Now we'll hear the World of Stamps segment brought to us by Lena Valverde. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Radio Havana Cuba's World of Stamps, a program specially dedicated to stamp collectors the world over. In today's program, we will tell you about a stamp series by the Brazilian Post Administration dedicated to Brazilian architect Oscar Niemeyer. We will also tell you about a stamp marking the 400th anniversary of the restoration of Russian state unity. And we will also have our segment on Cuban stamps. Stay tuned. The Brazilian Postal Administration issued a stamp series dedicated to Brazilian architect Oscar Niemeyer. The series is comprised of two stamps featuring two famous works by Niemeyer, the Latin American Memorial and the Niterói Contemporary Art Museum. The Latin American Memorial is a cultural, political and lecture complex inaugurated in 1989 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The architectural setting, designed by Oscar Niemeyer, is a monument to the cultural, political, social, and economic integration of Latin America, spanning an area of 84,482 square meters. It is a public foundation, financially and administratively autonomous, maintained by the state government. The architecture complex consists of several buildings arranged around two squares. It comprises the Tiradentes Palo Pax, the Victor Civita Latin American Library, the Brazilian Center of Latin American Studies, the Marta Trava Gallery of Latin American Art, the Creativity Pavilion, the Simon Bolivar Auditorium, and the Latin American Parliament Building. In the main square, there is a large concrete structure, also designed by Oscar Niemeyer, representing an open hunt in vertical position with a map of Latin America painted in red. It is a symbol of Latin America's past of oppression and its battles for freedom, with the red map as a reminder of the blood from the sacrifices that were made. The memorial has a permanent collection of works of art on display in the indoors and outdoor spaces, as well as a large assemblage of Latin American folk art. 
housed in the Creativity Pavilion. The library comprises 30,000 titles besides the music and image departments. The memorial promotes exhibitions, conferences, debates, video sessions, theater, dance and music performances. It also has a richer center specializing in Latin American issues. From 1989 to 2007, the memorial also served as a host to the Latin American Parliament. Meanwhile, the Niteroi Contemporary Art Museum is located in the city of Niteroi, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and is one of the city's main landmarks. It was completed in 1996. Designed by the mayor, the Niteroi Contemporary Art Museum is 16 meters high. Its cupola has a diameter of 50 meters with three flowers. The museum projects itself over the 817 square meters reflecting pool that surrounds a cylindrical vase like a flower in the words of Niemeyer. A wide access slope leads to a hall of the expositions which has a capacity for 60 people. Two doors lead to the viewing gallery through which the Guanabara Bay Rio de Janeiro and Sugarloaf Mountain can be seen. The two stamps were printed in the offset system with measures 30 per 40 millimeters and perforation 12 and a half. The series began to circulate on March 18, 2003. The Russian Post has issued a stamp to commemorate the 400th anniversary of unity restoration in the Russian state. In the momentum, 1612 Russian people, by all his will, kept the state from the final and irreversible collapse. This travel time entered in history as an example of unity. The formation of the Russian nation in its geographical boundaries, the revival of the Russian state power and the emergence of greatest heroes are associated with those events. Appeal of Patriot, Hermogenes pushed his compatriots on defense of the faith and fatherland. The citizen, Minin, and the prince, Kosharsky, led the militia and liberated Moscow from invaders. The block illustrates Kosma Minin and Dmitry Kosharsky, Patriarch Hermogenes, the image of the coat of arms, and Our Lady of Kazan, on the background of the Moscow Kremlin's old panorama. <laughs> The Cuban company Correos de Cuba began to circulate a commemorative series of the 60th edition of the Ernest Hemingway International Marlin Fishing Tournament and the 50th anniversary of the first and only meeting held between Cuban revolution leader Fidel Castro and the author of The All Men and the Sea. The Cuban Fishing Tournament was first held on May 26, 1950. The annual event attracts hundreds of fishermen from around the world. Participating countries include the United States, Canada, Russia, Poland, Mexico, and France. Convened by the Hemingway International Nautical Club and the Cuban Tourism Ministry, the Marlin Fishing Tournament is one of the island's main recreational and sports events. The series comprises four stamps, all of them with a face value of 65 cents of a Cuban peso. They were printed in the vertical format measuring 33 per 44 millimeters and perforation 12 and a half. The stamps feature images of the world prestigious fishing tournament, the novel literature prize winner on board his jet, Pilar a blue marlin and a coveted prize granted to the winners of the event. The commemorative series of the 60th edition of the Ernest Hemingway International Marlin Fishing Tournament and the 50th anniversary of the first and only meeting held between Cuban revolution leader Fidel Castro 
and the utter of the old men and the sea began to circulate on May 29, 2010. And that's all for today. Join me again next Saturday when we will have more on the world of stamps. Here in Havana, I'm Lena Valverde, wishing you all the best collecting until we meet again. Thanks for tuning in to Radio Havana Cuba's English language broadcast. Now we'll hear Breakthrough, our science, technology, and environment feature, brought to us by Arnie Porto. Hello, amigos. Welcome to another edition of Breakthrough.